Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy, and today is so super exciting for me because this is a collaboration with my beautiful friend, Kristen Kay. When you're done here, I hope you'll go check out her channel. She's so talented and does amazing farmhouse DIYs that I know you'll love. And please let her know I sent you, and if you're visiting from Kristen's channel, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. So since spring is a time to celebrate new life and the new season, I thought we would take some old battered pieces and give them some new life and make them beautiful. And so I got this clock and this wood thing. I don't even know what this is. I think it was a vase because there's a large hole and it's really deep. It could have, no, I don't think it would have been a lamp because there's no hole at the bottom I don't know what it is but it's super neat and I like the shape and it's real wood so unfortunately we're gonna paint over the flowers and then I love this little basket and same thing it's got really cute strawberries on it but we're gonna give him a new life as well and then for 99 cents I found this bottle or decanter it's really heavy duty it's made out of like a clay or pottery stuff I don't know but I love it and I love the texture of the surface so we're gonna use this and give him new life and then for a dollar 99 I found this beautiful picture I love the shape of it it's got kind of straight lines on it and I like that for the farmhouse look and then anytime I find things that are made out of wood, I try and pick it up. You could get this cheaper from Home Depot because it's just a piece of wood and it's going to be used as a sign. But I like the beveled edges that are already there and so I don't have to mess with that. So the first thing I'm going to do is deconstruct the things that I need to and get them cleaned up and ready to sand. And so I do all of them at the same time so that I only have to make one trip to the garage to use my rotary sander and I only have to get super dirty one time. If you guys like to do wood crafts, I would really recommend getting a rotary sander. And I like this because you can just pop off the piece of sandpaper and put it back on and it sticks on there real easily and you're back to work in no time. And also make sure you're in a ventilated area when you're doing any kind of wood sanding. And I'm also wearing a very stylish mask so that I'm not inhaling all of the sawdust and particles. So to save time, I had my sweet Michael J go outside and spray some of these items. And then the other ones I'm gonna paint by hand. 
And I should tell you that that was our painting area in an icky part of our yard. So that's not what my backyard looks like. That's over by the trash cans. <laughs> and that's our painting table too. So anyway, I just took my Waverly White chalk paint and painted the other items that I needed to and just gave them a couple of coats until they were nice and covered. For the planks on the clock, I wanted to do something a little bit lighter, so I just added water to my chalk paint and then painted a couple of planks and then wiped that down with a rag. So now that all of my items are ready to go, we're gonna start working on each one of them. And for the bottle, I'm gonna be using the blessings out of the metal sign, a couple of carrots, and some jute twine. And then I'm using my ugly, ugly glue gun because it has the detail tip. And then a sanding block, and this poor guy really goes through it in these six projects, so may he rest in peace. So the first thing we're gonna do is start sanding and distressing our bottle. And because chalk paint is pretty thick to start with, and there's two coats on here, it was easy to take the paint off of the rounded edges and the corners, but on the flat surfaces, it was a little harder to do. So I remembered a sweet viewer told me to put water on it and it'll come up real easy. And this was a total game changer. I can't remember who it was that told me that, but thank you for that amazing tip. So after I get done getting it all distressed, I'm gonna take one of the galvanized metal signs and the one that says blessing, and I need to wrap it around the curve of the bottle. So all I did was just kind of push it with my fingers as much as I possibly could to get it to hug onto it. And then I took my Waverly antique wax and a makeup sponge and just started dabbing onto it just to kind of knock down the shine so it didn't look so new. And to get it to dry faster, I always use my heat gun. And so don't touch the metal after you do that though, because it's very hot. So now I'm gonna use my E6000 and because it doesn't dry instantly like hot glue does, there's not enough time to go through all of the words with the hot glue without it drying. So the E6000 goes on and then I'm going to take a couple of daubs of hot glue I don't know what a daub is, but it sounds like a little dot and a blob put together. So I just did the ends and added that to my bottle going sideways. And you kind of have to push this down and give it some force in order for it to finally stay in place. So then I'm gonna take a couple of my carrots and I always try and look for the ones with the cuter tops. I end up adding to it because I didn't think it was fluffy enough. So I just took some jute twine and tied a knot around the neck of the bottle. And I want these carrots to kind of hang to the side. So I just tied a knot around the top underneath the green in between the green and the orange and then just let them hang there. And then I took another piece of jute twine and tied them together and added some boxwood greenery from Walmart that I get for 97 cents. And I put that at the top just to give it a happier topping there. And then I just tied a sweet little bow with the jute twine holding that boxwood in. And then I'm going to hot glue that to the side of the bottle so it stays put.
And then to fill it, I'm using these super pretty flowers from Hobby Lobby. And these were $2 on sale during their 50% off. And so here it is all done. And this is a super easy, but I think way cute little bottle that you can fill with anything. And it just looks so pretty to me. And I was actually thinking of giving the carrots a little bit of a white covering, but I just went ahead with the orange because it kind of matches the underlying color of the bottle. So I love how it turned out and I hope you guys like it. So now we're gonna work on our beautiful little pitcher and I got this fabric, this is some linen ribbon, it's four inches and it's from burlapfabric.com and so I will have a coupon code for you guys for $5 off. There was a shipping issue that happened and they were quoting people for UPS instead of regular postal service. So anyway, just make sure that if you have issues with shipping you can give them a call if it doesn't work so all i did here was just gathered the fabric and kind of got it to where it was a little pleated and messy and then just tied a knot in the middle and then i'm gonna cut off the excess fabric and then i'm gonna make a hanging cross hang off the handle so to do that i'm using a piece that we used in a different craft the bookends and i just drilled a hole at the top so that i could feed my jute twine through it so using my sanding block i sanded it i was going to paint this with the antique wax but once i got it all the way down to the wood it was just so pretty and matched perfectly so i left it the way it was you could even use kind of a clear coat to top it off but it was just perfect and rustic looking and I was in love with it so I just took my jute twine and wrapped it around the handle and then since I had two separate strings I decided to add some more of these beads that I love using these are from Amazon and I'll have that linked in the description box below as well so I just fed on well here I feed on three but I'm going to add two more later because it was quite long enough and then on the other strand I hung my cross and tied that in a knot as well So it was looking really good and rusticy, but I should have distressed it before I put the ribbon and things on it. So I started sanding it and then remembered, silly goose, it's white underneath, so that's not gonna show. And so I took my antique wax and first used a makeup sponge, and then I'll go back with my white and a paintbrush and just got it all nice and rustic, worn looking. I felt like this was starting to look like something that would have been used as a watering pitcher back in biblical times or ancient times. And it was perfect because the readings at mass yesterday, which is actually my today, it was from John 4, 4, the Samaritan woman at the well. So I thought this was perfect and I was just really loving how this was coming out. And here it is all finished and I used some Walmart baby's breath for the inside. You could also use this 
as something in the bathroom where you put your hand towels, roll them up and put that in there, which is probably what I'll do. But I love how this turned out. There's just something about raw wood and white that just makes my heart so happy and it seems so serene. And then coupled with the linen fabric, I just, I love the way this turned out. I got the baby's breath and we used this at a party that we did for my hopefully soon to be daughter-in-law if my son would ever make the move already and so anyway i just think it turned out super sweet and i hope you guys like it so now i'm gonna work on this wooden pillar or vase or whatever it is and i had this in my stash with my 80s ivy all over it and then these half beads that are the same type as the wooden beads that I use, they're just cut in half, and I'll link those as well. And then some more of these baby's breath pieces. And here's what we did at her party. It was a little fiesta, and so we put those in cans, and it was really cute. But anyway, you can see the difference between the Dollar Tree baby's breath and the Walmart. It's just a lot softer and prettier, I think. So originally this was the first idea I had. And so I had just added some of those Dollar Tree sunflowers in the light white and then added that baby's breath around. And I'll show you that in a minute. But then I just added those half beads to the top and bottom of the pillar on all four sides and I just did the outside ones first and made them flush with the edges and then I put one in between to make sure that it was in the middle I just did that all the way around on both sides and then I'm going to distress the middle portion and again using my friend's method of using water and it made the wood come up so pretty and it was a real light wood so this was just the look that I was going for and then to do the beads, I just used my paintbrush with a lot of water and a little bit of paint and made those kind of that blotchy look, not really whitewash because that's more of a solid whitewash, but I wanted it to be blotchy. I don't even know what that's called, but I just put the paint on and then wiped it off in different places with my paper towel. So here's the first option of what you can do and I just put this I guess flower orb into the top and this is really pretty. I love how it turned out and it would be beautiful for a wedding or something but I'm just giving you options because not everybody's going to want a big old cross on the top of this but <laughs> you can use this or you can actually do something with boxwoods. I have a boxwood round orb that I'll put on here as well to show you what that looks like. And so this is really pretty. I had this in the garage, so it's a little dusty, but this is another option. So, but what we're gonna do is take this Dollar Tree cross and it's wooden, of course. And I just took some of my Waverly antique wax and mixed it with some white Waverly chalk paint. And I'd actually seen my friend Nicole at the Week's Nest do this where she mixes the wax with other colors and gives it a totally different look. So I gave it a little bit of a softer look and then kind of went around the edges with the darker shade and then just made sure that it was all nicely blended and then I took my white because the pillar is white so that we won't see the stand really and I just painted the base and then I used my hot glue and glued that to the top and of course there's the hole there and we're going to use that to place in some greenery.
I got this beautiful floral stem from Goodwill for 50 cents and so I just took one of the flowers and hot glued that to the front and here's how it turned out. I again am so in love with this. I love how the greenery just kind of drapes over and that was to cover the hole as well but I just think it adds so much and again with the white and the raw wood I am just so happy in my heart when I see this and I don't know if you've noticed the beautiful table runner that I'm using that is also from burlapfabric.com and I'll put that again in the description box below So for the last three projects, I'm going to be using my Silhouette Cameo 3 and some black vinyl. And this is from Frisco Craft. And I have to tell you, I actually reached out to them to see if I could use them in my videos because they have the best vinyl that I have found. You know, they only have black and white, but they're planning on extending their line. So I just love them and they're so nice over there. So again, my poor sanding block is being used to its max. And so I just sanded all the sides and got that to where the wood was showing through. And then I measured out to see how long my decal would be. And so I'm just gonna cut out, it is finished. And because it's only a 12 by 12 mat here, and actually I'm running out of vinyl, so I had to piece things together. But even if that happens, just know you can always make do and be resourceful and use your scraps. So I just cut out my words and then pulled the vinyl off and then weeded all of my letters on the insides. And then I'm going to put my transfer paper or transfer tape over the top of it and then cut those out so that I can place them individually and piece together my word.
So now I'm going to take this Dollar Tree cross and I just undid the screws from behind and separated the wood part from the metal part. And I didn't do anything to the wood part before putting it on my sign. It was just perfect the way it was. So I just used my hot glue and stuck that kind of at an angle in between the two parts of the sentence and then it was done. And here it is all done and super simple. And of course, using the Cameo is always such a blessing because you can make easy work out of it by learning how to use it. And it takes no time at all once you really get used to it. So I've had a lot of people asking me about it and which brand to use, whether Cricut or the Cameo. And I haven't used the newer Cricut, so I really don't know anything about them. I'm sure they are just as good. And I just happened to see it was Mary at White Cottage. If you aren't already, you need to go check her out for sure. Um, but she used the cameo and she did a tutorial on it and so i am using it and i love it and any of the projects where i use my cameo and you see the decals i will always have those available in my etsy shop so you can go there it's white sparrow living and you can get whatever you need so now for my clock, there was a lot of measuring involved in this one because we're going to keep it a clock. And if this is going to be specifically for Easter or Lent, so if you're not into that, you can do something. There's lots of ideas on Pinterest. I thought this one was pretty funny. But what I'm going to do are the different events that took place during Holy Thursday and Good Friday. So I cut out my words and then place them in the 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock positions. So in the 6 o'clock position, I put Last Supper, which would have been on Holy Thursday evening. And then in the 9 o'clock position, I put Condemned to Death, which would have been Friday morning, Good Friday. And then the 12 o'clock position, I put Crucified. And in the three o'clock position, I put it is finished. Now, some of these times will be maybe a little bit off and there is a discrepancy between the Gospels of John and Mark, but this makes the most sense to me. And the whole point is to understand what's going on during the day. And I think this just makes it a little more real and is definitely a conversation starter as far as teaching your grandkids or your kids what happened on those very important days. I really wanted this to be a working clock and so I used this old one that I found in the garage that I was going to transfer the mechanism from this one into the new one but it didn't quite work out because the arm part was not long enough and the ones from the original piece those were broken here I'm trying to tell myself how or remind myself what it looks like inside so that when I put it back together I would know how it went but that didn't quite happen and even though I was super careful and wanting to get this to work it didn't so as you'll see here over to the right that's what mess I ended up with so as an alternative I decided that this was going to be a faux clock and so it's going to be stationed in the it is finished position I did go to try and find one at Walmart, but they did not have them. So I want this to work eventually. So I will change this out and put in a working mechanism. So in the meantime, I just hot glued the hands into the position. And then I took a wooden heart from Dollar Tree and they come with the little pieces of jute twine. So I made a sweet little bow at the top of that and then hot glued it underneath the arms or the hands of the clock and it was done. 
And here's how it turned out. I so am in love with this. I just love how white and crisp it looks with the black against the wood. And you can still see the wood grain through that kind of whitewash effect we did. So I am in love with this. You know, I'm always in love with stuff, but it's in a non-boastful way, of course. Okay, I just hope you know that. I don't think I mentioned the other fonts we used, so I will put those in the description box below in case you want to do something like this. You could also put a monogram or your last name or your kids' names, put dad at the top, mom at the bottom, and then the kids on the side or anything. The Options are endless. Now for our basket, I'm gonna be using this one inch ribbon that is also from burlapfabric.com. Some greenery, some floral foam, and then another decal that I cut out from my Cameo. So I really like this font, and as you can see, there's little squirrelies at the beginning and end of the word. And so when you purchase the font from defont.com, they give you, it's called cream candy, and there's an uppercase swirl and a lowercase swirl. So it's really neat. I didn't see it in the freebies, but you might check anyway, because it just came after I purchased it. So I'm not sure. But anyway, I took my ribbon and I had to do it in two pieces because of the handles. So I just hot glued that to the top rim of the basket and then I I guess I forgot to push record when I put my floral foam into the bottom of the basket but I just used hot glue and placed two pieces and then just started adding my boxwoods and some random greenery some of it is long and pretty and just like that you have a new life for this old basket. And oh my gosh, I am so crushing on this. I love how this one turned out. I love the little swirlies. That was kind of a happy accident that I didn't even know I had the capability of doing. So anyway, here's this, and then I'm gonna show you everything all put together. And don't forget to go check out my friend Kristen K at her channel. I'll put the link to her video in the description box as well. And tell her I said hi. Make sure she knows I sent you. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment and let me know what you think. I read every single one and I appreciate the love and support that everybody has been giving me. And so I hope everybody is staying calm and everything is fine. We're praying for each other. I'll have another prayer post up shortly. And I know that I love seeing all the support from each other going to others. And I just think that is such an amazing amazing thing. So I hope everybody has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye.